Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Tony Hager is joining me as always, and you're watching Global Wrestling News. Our lead topic this week, the first Olympic team qualifier is in the books. It took place at the Bill Farrell International in New York. In all, 14 athletes were added to the field, highlighting the two-day event, 65 kilos. It was Jordan Oliver who earned the last second victory over four-time NCAA champ Logan Stever. Oliver trailed 5-4 late in the second period, but hit a huge single leg to the back for four points. He escaped with an 8-5 victory. As everybody knows, Oliver Stever is a big rivalry. Um, but going into the match, you know, just having a mindset of you know, scoring points and, and getting to my attacks, uh, no matter what the outcome of, of an exchange is between me and Logan Stever, because as you see, there's going to be a lot of points scored, there's going to be a lot of exchanges, a lot of wrestling. And uh, that's the great thing about wrestling Stever, you know, he's going to give you everything he got. And he's going to get to my legs, he's going to score on me. I got to be able to, you know, overcome that adversity and, and, and respond. And, you know, being down three and knowing Logan can keep scoring, uh, I definitely had to pick up the pace and, you know, first period was a little bit slow, hanging in ties. And, you know, second period I changed it up a little bit, movement and uh, getting my hands moving in my face. And it opened up a couple shots for me and I was able to pull out the win. Tony, we talk a lot about the U.S. depth at 74 kilos, but with Metcalf, Green, Stever, Oliver and Pico all at 65, well, this is going to be a really hard weight class to win in Iowa City. I mean, this is probably the deepest weight class we have now, especially with Green going down. I mean, Metcalf, though, he's owned this weight class and on, on U.S. soil, so it'll be interesting to see if the world champ could come down and dethrone Metcalf in his own town. Well, Tony, how about 57 kilos? Outside of facing a 10-3 a deficit in the second round, Tyler Graff, at least to me, looked absolutely flawless. The former Wisconsin Badger racked up four technical falls on the day and wow. hit a single leg to a leg lace to defeat Zach Sanders 10-0, just 42 seconds into the finals. It's, it's, a, it's a step, so I'm just a mission accomplished here, um, and I'm, I'm grateful. Just go back, look at the drawing board tomorrow, and, and just uh, keep working. Well, I think we may have underestimated the talent of 57 as well. Where does Tyler stand, say, in the division and overall? There has been Tony Ramos and a bunch of lurkers at this weight class. Tyler Graff has battled Ramos in folk style in the past, and I, I give him a, a shot to make it a tough run against him. You know, I think Graff and Hockstrasser both have that shot, but Tony Ramos is undefeated at Carver Hawkeye Arena and on U.S. soil in uh, international competition. Dude, you're being US. a fanboy. You're being a fanboy. It's clear cut. You're a Tony Ramos fan. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of anybody that's going to represent the United States. And it, but it's hard to argue with somebody that's won back-to-back -back world team berths and he's undefeated at Carver, no? All right. I guess you got a point. But I don't think it'll be as an easy run as you are predicting at least not for Tony or anybody else in the weight. Now training in Arizona State, 2014 U.S. World Team member Ed Ruth looked better than ever at 86 kilos. He won three of his four bouts by Tech Ball, including a 13-0 final shutout over John Reeder. Out in this match, you know, I, I felt like I've been working really hard, you know, and I kind of wanted to, I wanted to let that show in that match. Um, and also, the last time I wrestled him, I was like, man, it's just, I was just leaving too much in the hands of the ref, you know. I didn't know if I was going to win that match or if he was going to win that match. Honestly, I thought I lost it. And, you know, I just, I hate that feeling. When I came out there and I had my chances and I saw where I can get them open, I took it. How do you feel you wrestled today as a whole? Um, I feel like I wrestled good. There's a lot of room for improvement, you know. You can, you can out of settle where you're at or you can keep pushing forward. And I can, I feel like there's a lot more improvement I can do. Um, I feel like this is just the start of it. I'm li I like where I'm starting off so far, but you know, I, I would still like to see more. So again, this weight class is stacked. Dake, Taylor, both moving up to 86, but I think we've forgotten just how good Ed Roof truly is. And Jake Herbert, of course, still in contention as well. How do you see this class shaking out in Iowa City? I strongly believe that Ed Ruth is our guy at this weight class uh, for Rio. I mean, Herbert is a bad matchup for him, and I think that's why he's, he's had some issues. You know, uh, maybe moving his training grounds out to Arizona State would be a, a, a positive for him. We don't know what happens in that room. So, I mean, probably a big reason is Taylor moving up, and he doesn't want to be in the same room as him. But, you know, change of scenery is always good for some people. Change of scenery, change of style as well. There was a ton of great action in Greco. 
Well, specifically, I want to talk about the heavyweights. After being dominated by Ty Walls at the All-Star Classic, Adam Kuhn manned up, hit a body lock, and tossed Toby Erickson for four big points, and then a fall with just 41 seconds left in the finals. Basically, just wrestling tough. That's a big thing, just trying to work on getting my positions. Um, really trying to work on push the pace, just because I feel like I got you know, a really good gas tank. So I really wanted to push the pace in the matches that I could. And uh, got, a, got a couple of good throws in there. And, you know, just... You know, hats off to you know Toby. He wrestled a great match, and I had to come up back from behind just to get back at him. So he had a great, great tournament, and I just got lucky on a throw. Well, now that you're, I mean, you're qualified now, you know, for the for the trials. Are you going to be wrestling any more, you know, during the college season, freestyle wise at the open or? Uh, definitely anything? sticking with Greco right now, yeah. and uh, we'll see what next year holds with the freestyle. So basically, just wrestling Greco. You know, overall, I think this one caught people by surprise. Robbie Smith obviously still has the lock or at least a firm grasp on the 130 kilo division. But after beating the second ranked heavyweight in the country, I think it's safe to call Adam Kuhn at least a contender. I mean, Kuhn has unbelievable talents in Greco and freestyle for that matter. But, you know, I, I think he's just undersized for Robbie Smith. He's got the quickness maybe to go up against Robbie. So this, this could be a good match down the line. All right, Tony. We're going to argue when we come back from break a little bit more. But right now, we got to go to break. Quick timeout. More global wrestling news right after this. All right, welcome back to Global Wrestling News. The Michigan Wolverines are entering the season ranked three on many of the early season rankings. Why? because they've got a ton of talent. Joining us now to talk about it, Joe McFarland, the head coach of the Wolverines. Joe, how are you? I'm doing great. It's good to be with you. Well, Michigan brought three wrestlers to the Classic, but it was Rossi Bruno who picked up a big win in overtime. What are your thoughts on his victory? Yeah, I thought he wrestled really solid. You know, I mean, he'd been been, been training really hard. He had a great summer with him, um, you know. Um, it was a good, it was a great match. It went back and forth and, and, uh, you know, Rossi had some opportunities and Beckman was able to counter. And so it was, went into overtime and, and, uh, Rossi got in and, and, and finished. And so it was, yeah, it was a good start for his season. What was the difference between Kuhn's match at the classic and his performance of the Bill Farrell? Um, you know, I, I, you know, obviously when he was wrestling the Bill Farrell, it was, it was Greco and, and, uh, Adam, you know, he, he goes back and forth between freestyle and Greco and collegiate. Um, but, um, you know, Wall, Walls wrestled a great match. I mean, he really did. And, and uh, you know, we, we, he got down 5-0 right away with a, with a takedown to his back, gave up a takedown to his back. So down there, the, the, one of the experimental rules they were using was a three-point takedown. So he got three and two. And, and so, um, you know, you, know I, you can't start matches like that against a quality guy like Walls. And, and hats off to him. He did a great job. And, and uh, you know, he was able to secure a win. Obviously, great individuals at Michigan, Coach, but you put together a team ranked preseason in the top five, as high as three on many. What are your thoughts on this year's team? Yeah, I think we got a nice balance. We really do. We got, you know, five returning All-Americans, and we've got some, some really good older um, uh, leadership, good leadership in our program, and along with some really good young guys that, that, that are competing every day in the practice room. And so, yeah, we, we've had a really good summer. We've talked a lot about this upcoming season, and, and um, you know, we're, we're – we're, We've uh, we've raised the bar. Expectations are high, and, and uh, you know, so it, it's been it's been uh, we got a good group of guys in our practice room, and they're training really hard. So it's good to see. Joe, thanks for the time. Thank you. Yeah, we appreciate it. Have a good day, okay? All right, wrestling fans, stay tuned. GWN continues after the break. All right, recruiting news always heats up before the season, and Oklahoma State landed yet another big one this week when Keegan Moore decided to become a Cowboy. Are you surprised by the decision? I mean, all signs pointed to him to going to Minnesota or going below the border to wrestle for Swab to join his two brothers who are currently on the squad, so I am surprised. I didn't know Oklahoma State was even on his radar. Well, Keegan is projected out at 184 in college, and Oklahoma State has been looking for somebody to step up at 84 or 97. Is Keegan Moore their guy? I mean, from what I have seen from Keegan, he, he's very physical on his feet, makes it extremely difficult to score on. So if he can find, uh, with, with that solid defense, if he can find some offense from uh, Coach Smith and, and company, I think he will be their guy. 
Well, the most anticipated sighting perhaps this year took place this Thursday in Apple Valley, Minnesota. Let's find out together where Mark Hall is going. I'd like to thank the University of Minnesota, Ohio State University, Arizona State University, Penn State University, and the University of Wisconsin. They've, they've helped me so much um, as far as my wrestling goes, you know, uh, becoming a stronger person, growing in my faith. And uh, I'd like to thank all, these, all five of these schools for giving me the opportunities that they give me, and I'm forever thankful. And trust me, if I could go to all five schools at the same time, I, I really wish I could. But unfortunately, I can't. Today, I'm proud to announce that I'll be becoming a Penn State Nittany Lion. This is a great decision, Scott, because he has Olympic medals on his mind over national titles. So this will this will give him a chance to do both, but this is the coach that can get him those Olympic medals. All right, project him out at weight. Where do you see him? And could it be the next four-timer? I mean, I would like Isaiah Martinez to become the next four-timer, but Hall obviously could follow in his footsteps. He hasn't had success uh, against those top international wrestlers, so you know I personally thought that we would see him spend a year at the OC OTC with Coach Slay and develop those talents. But. All right. Well, congratulations to Mark Hall. Great decision. We look forward to covering your collegiate and international career. Well, speaking of international wrestling, the World Anti-Doping Agency released a report showing Russia had 225 violations spread across 30 sports. Findings have led to 10 lifetime bans, including athletes, coaches, and doctors. Now, this isn't surprising to me. In almost every sport that we see uh, with, with doping allegations coming out, I mean, the damage is already done. Those medals have already been given out. Money has been given out. So it'll be interesting to see you know, who actually uh, the fines go to. Well, Russia has accounted for 48% of the world's 68 total wrestling violations. 48%. How will this affect the results in Rio? I think this means uh, we'll have a much cleaner Olympics. And at the end of the day, you know, it's extremely tough to win a gold medal, even with PED use. So, you know, it's unfair advantage, obviously. But in, in wrestling, though, technique beats power nine out of ten times. Well, living the dream checks were delivered recently to the four U.S. world champs. Let's take a look. You know, I want to congratulate and, um, you know, that we're here celebrating wrestling, obviously, and, and Kyle and Jordan and Helen and Adeline and, and um, you know, winning a world championships is, is an awesome feat. And, um, you know, I want to congratulate them. I don't think the average person realizes, you know, how much work, time and effort uh, it takes to win a, a world or an Olympic medal, uh, nevertheless to be a champion. It, it is a total commitment. And, um, you know, I think that's what we're here for is to provide our Olympians, our world team members, the best resources to go on and win those medals. I'm 24 years old and I am fully funded by USA Wrestling and I couldn't be living this amazing life without that support that we have. And so it's just unbelievable that I'm living the life I am. I'm a professional athlete right now and it's, I, I'm a female and, and it's a pretty amazing life. I was blessed with the opportunity to train at the Olympic Training Center my senior year and I was able to wrestle with some of the greatest um, Americans and then I got to travel overseas and wrestle with some foreign competition too and I learned a lot through those response through those uh, you know through my travel and uh, basically just believing in myself and knowing that I'm surrounding myself with the best people that I possibly can and if I put the work in then the results should be good. I think the thing I wanted to ask about you is, you know, and you've talked about this, you know, you had a big disappointment four years ago, mm -hmm. not making the Olympic team when I think you probably hoped to and expected to and other people did. You know, take us through your thought process coming out of that and, you know, how it motivated you. Yeah, um, <laughs> hindsight's always 2020, um, so it's easy for me to say this now, but at the time it wasn't, but I think losing might have been I'm not going to say best because it was still the worst, but the best and worst thing that happened to me. Um, it just made me stop and reevaluate who, you know, what I wanted from wrestling. Um, you know, I, I know I love the sport, but I didn't get what I wanted out of it. And I think Jordan um, talked about that, you know, perfectly, just what it feels like. So I think if you've ever experienced a loss, it hurts. 
And, uh, but it was good because I think that was something that developed me, not just as a wrestler moving forward, but as a person, because I really had to stop and evaluate every area of my life and my training and, you know, my mindset. And um, it just really motivated me to just adopt a positive attitude and say, well, if not now, you know, figure out a way for next time. And it's changed me for the better, I think. It's great that uh, when sport can do that for you, because at the end of the day, I won't be able to be a wrestler forever as much as I wish I could. I'm hoping my body holds out, but we'll see. But you know, the things that you do get from wrestling that last forever, and uh, moments like this, and just knowing that um, it's bigger than myself, and I have support from so many people that you know help me to be holding this right now is just really incredible. It's life changing. I think USA Wrestling has a very bright future. You know, it's been a great opportunity for me to bring home a lot of these, but I think we have a lot of young guys who are going to have an opportunity to, to have these sitting in their living rooms at home very soon. The question is, how am I going to get this through the airport tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, quick timeout. When we come back, we're talking Iowa Hawkeyes and Oklahoma State Cowboys. That's after the break. Well, the fourth-ranked Hawkeyes of the University of Iowa are set to host Oklahoma State at the Grapple on the Gridiron, a dual meet held on the football field at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City. The event, weather permitting, is expected to shatter the NCAA single dual attendance record currently held by Penn State. We talked with head coach Tom Brands. You know, when we broke the record in 2008, we were talking amongst each other, and I said to our staff, if, if that record gets broken at that time, we thought it would be Minnesota. If that record gets bo broke, we're going to Kinnick. And, uh, you know, Penn State's broke it twice now. They broke it, and then they broke it their own record. So it's time. It's time to uh, go to Kinnick. My reaction is whenever one of our staff brings a creative idea, my first reaction is, okay. And then, and then you start to figure out, well, let's see if it can be done. And it took several months and several people making sure we've thought of everything. But uh, once we went through it, it, I got more and more excited as we got closer. Uh, crowd's awesome. Crowd's really important for us here at Iowa because we have the best fans and the best crowd. They can really get involved and they can really fire you up, especially if you're if you're winning big or losing big. Either way, you know you're gonna get get that major, get that fall, get that tech, or you're gonna you're gonna come back from that that um, that adversity. So fans are a huge part. Your adrenaline is gonna be rushing. It doesn't doesn't really matter how cold it is, and it's you're gonna be doing the same routine. Everything it's it's a match, you know. So you're getting you're getting ready for it. You're getting up for it, and you're bringing your A game. They want the best. No, they expect the best. They expect me to be the best. So then they want the best experience for wrestling, the best experience with fans and atmosphere. So they're always you know, pushing the envelope. I think that's what, if you stay in your comfort zone, that's really going to stay. No, if you want to do new things, you want to be the best, you have to keep pushing the envelope, you knowing your training and your wrestling competition, and then even for events like this. Because he's a wrestling purist, he's about, you know, doing things for wrestling, and um, he's an adventurous type of guy. I mean, he's shot Cape Buffalo with a, with a bow in Africa. And, uh, you know, that's something, saying something right there. So he's my, uh, probably my kind of guy when it comes to adventure. And I don't think we're ever going to go hang out together anytime soon, but uh, certainly a lot of like-mindedness there. Is Didn't it, hesitate at all, though. That's a the, tribute to his program and, and uh, you know, what he's trying to do with his team as well. And I'll tell you what, I'm watching this board up there, and make no mistake about it, you know, the last couple of years that we've wrestled them, um, they're going to come in to, to, I'll say this, they're coming in for blood. Where's the number at, Tony? I mean, just a little bit ago I checked, and it was just under 35,000 tickets that have been sold. And, and I think, uh, you know, Tom Brains has been selling this. Every single number they give, he just keeps on saying, well, there's only 35,000 left. And that's the 70,000 is what Kinnick holds. So fans are encouraged to buy the tickets ahead of time for this because no one wants to sit in line and miss that first match. Or stand in line. You know, it's up to you how you participate in the line. Do you know what weight they're going to start at yet? <laughs> if history proves itself out. If, if history proves out, Brands and Smith, they'll agree that we should start this duel at 125 pounds. I agree. I like starting it traditionally. Whenever two top teams battle, you know there will be some swing bouts in your eyes. What are they? Right off the bat, we'll have number four, Thomas Gilman, against number seven, Eddie Clamara. Gilman on paper should easily win this. He's major decision in the past, but you know, this is a lot of pressure. Big match, big first duel of the season. So I think this will be a little bit closer battle on the football field. That was then, this is now. What about 49? 
Right, Sorensen against Kalika, this is a match the average fan will write off just because of rankings wise, but you know, uh, he will have a shot at upsetting Sorensen, I think. That match is a swing match, but 174 pounds, probably, arguably the biggest swing match. I mean, we've got number six, Alex Meyer, to look to take down number four, Kyle Kutchmer. You know, so both of these guys are grinders, so I expect this to be a, a low scoring match. And we'll see who had the best offseason training to take a, come out on top in the last closing seconds. Well, crowd will make a difference. 35,000 plus will be in attendance at Kinnick Stadium. We'll have coverage of that event on next week's show. With the show winding down, we can't go on without mentioning Adeline Gray and Jordan Burroughs for being nominated for Team USA's Best of Year Awards. Are there other wrestlers that should be on that list? In my eyes, these two have had the biggest impact on our sport on and off the mat this past year. So they represent our sport to its highest regard. So uh, th this is the way it should be. Fans, you should vote by going to the address you see on your screen. Unfortunately, Tony, we're out of time for our executive producer, Andrew Barth, our producer, Wayne Boyd. He'll be back next week, by the way. Of course, for Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and all of us at Takedown, we appreciate you watching. I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week.